Hey, what's up, YouTube? Ronix with that unnatural, and in this story, I'm going to be retouching my own image. I know I've done so many tutorials about retouching other people's images, and in this story, I want to show you guys how I'm going to be retouching my own image. So, this is myself here, and you can see the person that took the image didn't frame it quite well because even the softbox was uh, in the frame. And we had, I took this basically at my home. And you can see the curtain right behind so we just want to clean up that and we remove the blemishes before we do skin retouching and color grading so this is going to be basically an in-depth tutorial but we just want to do it in the shortest time possible so let's kick in and we start uh, doing the cleaning up before we can do the skin retouching and color grading so basically i crop the image uh, in a ratio of 4 to 5 or 8 by 10 since I want to get rid of this black soft box right above here, I'm just going to move this down. And I think I'm going to slightly crop out my hair, but that is not really that important. So this is what we have right now. So I want to clean up this background so i'm simply going to create a duplicate of the background there by hitting ctrl or command j and i'm going to get uh, my pen tool and i'm going to start uh, selecting because i want to clean up this area so i'm simply selecting the area that is uh, containing uh, this curtain or this distraction in the background as you can see that so I'm just going to come and select it and right click, sorry, right click and I'm going to come to make selection. Our feathering is 2 and I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to come to my clone stamp tool and zoom in slightly. Then increase its size by using the brackets right next to the P key on the keyboard. And I'm going to hold down the alternate key and sample. So hold down the alternate or option and I'm just going to sample, click and now start painting. So I'm basically painting over this curtain and it is just copying the color and pasting it towards this side of this image. So I'm going to come and sample again and I'm going to come and start basically painting over to get rid of uh, this distraction in the background so it is more of holding down the alternate key and sampling and just painting over so I'm just going to calm down and so don't mind if at all it is li uh, leaving some rough edges because I'm going to be fixing that uh, shortly uh, during my retouching and using the mixer brush tool I'm going to simply hit Ctrl or Command D to deselect. So I know this really looks awkward and rough, so don't mind about that. So after doing so, I'm just going to merge uh, these layers. And actually, even before I can merge, let me first of all clean up the skin. So I'm just going to get my spot healing brush tool. And since this is not like a blank layer, I'm just going to leave this unchecked and I'm going to increase on the size or zoom in and if make sure you don't have the caps lock key turned on because it's going to make your tool look like this cross icon so turn it off and simply start clicking over the areas you want to clean up in the image so basically I'm doing a retouching of myself so I'm just going to come and clean up these uh, dark dark spots and blemishes from myself so don't mind if at all I accidentally I leave out some of them because uh, the mixer brush tool is going to deal with those stubborn stubborn uh, blemishes so I think we are done cleaning up at uh, this very image so after I've cleaned up I'm going to first of all merge these two layers by hitting shift 
or even before I can merge, I'm just going to create a new layer from this layer one by hitting Command J. So we just need two layers for our frequency separation. So I'm going to simply name this layer high. I'm going to name this layer low. So the low frequency contains the colors and the skin tones and the high contains the textures of the image. So I'm going to turn off the high frequency and select the low frequency layer. Come to filter and I'm going to come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So I want to blur out or slightly remove the textures. So I'm going to basically zoom out like that and look for the area that seems to have more textures. So I'm going to go with uh, this area right here. So I'm going to start moving this radius until these textures have completely started disappearing or are not being visible enough. So I'm just going to move this. So I think uh, at around 10, uh, this, these have really lo been lost out. So you have to do that and ensure that you can no longer see them quite well in the image. And just hit OK. Then I'm going to come to the high frequency layer and activate it. Then come to image. And since this is uh, since this is a 16-bit image, I'm going to simply come to image. Then come to apply image. And after doing so, I'm going to come and select my low frequency layer because I want to subtract the textures from the low frequency layer. And the blending mode, since this is an 8-bit image, like if at all it is a, a an 8-bit image, sorry, uh, you have to use these settings. Blending is subtract, opacity 100, scale is 2, offset 128. But if at all it is a 16-bit image like I do have right now, just come and change the blending mode from subtract to add. Then the scale is going to be 2, offset 0, and make sure you turn on invert and you'll have your textures on this gray kind of layer. Come and hit OK. Then change the blending, the blending from normal and change it to... Uh, change it to linear light like that. So we are done separating the frequencies of the image into the textures and the colors. So just select both layers and hit Ctrl G or Command G on the keyboard. So we are going to name that uh, frequency separation like that. So after doing so, we are going to open our frequency separation. Come to the high frequency and uh, create a black and white on top of the high frequency layer and we're just going to slightly darken that. The reason for doing so is because we want our the uneven skin tones to be really visible in this very image. Then come and select the low frequency layer and come to your brushes and select the mixer brush tool. So setting it up, we need to make sure it is a clean one. And select the second option. We want the brush to automatically clean itself when you're trying to blend my skin. Uh, the wetness we're going to be using a wetness of around let's use nine percent load 75 mix 90 and the flow 100 make sure sample all layers is not checked or selected so come and select the low frequency layer and start uh, blending or evening out uh, the skin tones of this very image so and when you're doing so make sure you can increase on the size of your brush tool by using uh, the brackets right after the P key on the keyboard. So mix the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone to even out the skin tones. Remember, skin retouching is more of evening out or harmonizing the transitions between the skin tones. And you know, uh, when light hits uh, our skins, it tends to create or bring about uh, that inconsistency in maybe the skin tones or maybe the skin textures just the reason as to why we are using the mixer brush tool to kind of uh, harmonize or blend or even out uh, those skin tones and just create that kind of balance so let's see the before and after so far this is the before after before after you can see what you have just done with the forehead so since it is a retouching tutorial of a male model and that is myself in question uh, just do less you know you don't want to come up with an over retouched image of a male model make sure you leave some some room I should say 
uh, for your images so just come and blend you have the shadows blend them too and the highlight and come and blend these mid-tones and just harmonize them basically that is what we are doing using the uh, mixer brush tool so just come and just harmonize these these tiny tiny and small small areas so i are just going to come right down here and you're going to uh, do that like that so basically you can turn this off and see uh, your progress and when you use the emissa brush tool don't over zoom in unless you're trying to uh, blend an area that is really tiny or really small uh, on your images like if at all i wanted to blend here i would have to zoom in and just blend that area so you have to zoom in by using ctrl or command plus on the keyboard to zoom in so i'm just going to come and i'm going to also harmonize or blend uh, these areas and for the hand i'm just going to brush just a little bit because i don't want uh, to make it so smooth i want to leave more of that a masculine kind of feel to uh, this very image so let's see the before and after turn off the black and white and you can see the before after before after for a skin retouching and removal of blemishes so we just want to fine-tune this uh, make sure you're still on your low frequency layer and come and select your lasso tool zoom in and just fine-tune this image even more so just come and make a selection and when using the lasso tool make sure your feathering is between 22 and 24 pixels uh, to get a refined selection and when you're selecting the skin uh, you always have to make sure you only and only select the skin area and you leave out the hair and maybe the eyebrows and the edges of the image so after making a selection on the skin come back to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur so just move this until you feel like you're getting uh, the best skin texture you feel like for your image and I think at around 30 I have a nice texture and it looks really even and natural so I just want to apply this effect onto the overall image so make a selection according to the shape right click and click on Gaussian blur and if at all you feel it is too much you can simply simply use shift ctrl f or shift command f and you can reduce on the opacity so for this case i'm just going to leave it uh, the way it is so make that selection right click and come to gaussian blur so basically we are, we are doing more of fine tuning uh, this very image and we just don't want to go overboard we just want to do a less so i'm just going to come and i'm going to make a selection right there so i think uh, this looks okay so just want to do some little bit of uh, uh global dodging and burning and before we can do the global dodging and burning we are simply going to first of all clean up this very image uh using given african sep separation come and select the uh mixer brush tool and just increase on the weightness remember when you increase the weightness it's just going to blend things so much so just if at all i paint right here you can see we are simply getting rid of this line uh within the shortest time possible so we can simply just come and even increase it even more and do get or maybe clean up or smoothen uh, the background and for this case it is the wall so we're just going to clean uh, that up like that so just clean up uh, the background and uh, we are going to be good to go uh, within the shortest uh, time possible so I think you can see what we are basically doing so i can feel like i feel like this line is really uh, remaining so i'm just going to get my spot healing brush tool and come to the high frequency layer since it contains the textures i'm just going to uh, start 
drawing over it to replace it or get rid of that annoying line in our background so i think uh, it has really done a pretty nice job so you can see the before and the after before after we have a flawless image so we want to do some little bit of global dodging and burning so i'm going to hit delete on this black and white layer then i'm going to come the method i'm going to be using for this image is going to be the use of uh, the color range option for dodging and burning so i'm simply going to come to the curves adjustment layer sorry it is curves not, not levels come to the curves like that and now come to select and come to the color range so for this case i want to select the highlights first for this image and i'm going to make sure your your own quick mask and selection is on so click and you can refine that and i think at around 79 we are good to go so for this case we want first of all dodge the highlights that's why i sampled the highlights in the image come in now increase the highlight like that so it has to be really small before after before after it is not too much so i'm going to name that dodge then i'm going to come and create a second curves adjustment layer and i'm going to do the same for the burning so come to select come to color range and and for this case i'm going to just sample uh, the shadows in the image like that and i will use the same color range and i'm going to hit ok and for this case make a midpoint and drag down like that you can see we are getting that rich melanin kind of look it is the goal i was going in for for this very image and i'm going to name that burn so we want to put these two in a group by selecting both and hitting ctrl or command g on the keyboard g for girl i say and i'm going to name that d and b for dodging and burning so you can see the before and after before after for our dodging and burning so basically what i did after this i uh, was or what i usually do or what i'm going to do basically because we are retouching this in real time i'm going to simply create a stamp visible layer for all we have done and i'm going to take this image right back into camera for more color grading so i'm going to simply hit shift alternate command e on the keyboard or shift alternate control e on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. and i'm just going to duplicate it by hitting control or command j then come to filter and i'm going to come to camera raw filter so when i come to camera raw filter i'm going to first of all go all the way down to the calibration option and i'm going to come to the saturation of the reds and i'm just going to take it to negative 10 and the green primary and i'm going to do the same for that to around negative 10 i think that looks okay and let me see if at all i play around with the blue primary I think we are good to go like at around negative 3. You can see the before and after. It is not too much. I'm going to come all the way up like this. I'm going to come to my hue and saturation. And I'm going to come to, first of all, to my luminous of the oranges. And I'm going to knock it down like that. I'm going to come to my hues of the oranges still. And I'm going to just see what works best and i'm going to leave it at around four like that so basically that is all for the color grading right now so i'm going to come back up to my local adjustments and i'm going to add a little bit of contrast to around two and just uh, move my blacks down and add some little bit of warmth to the image to around one so after i have done so i'm going to come to my uh, adjustment brush tool for the eye whitening so i'm just going to zoom all the way in by holding down ctrl plus and getting my space bar holding it down and co command plus to zoom into the eyes so i'm going to come and get my adjustment brush tool 
I want to remove color from the white area and we have some yellow color. So I'm going, I'm going to move this to the blue side. 27 is going to do and this to around 61. Highlights because I want the eyes to pop to 3 and the whites to 4. And since we have color in the white area of the eyes, I'm going to come to the saturation option and I'm going to knock it down to around negative 65. Then after doing so, I'm just going to simply paint over in the white area of the eye basically. So I'm just going to paint over like that. And I'm going to come this side and also paint over the white area. Make sure you only paint over the white area and maybe intensify uh, that catch light uh, within the eyes like that to make these eyes really pop. So I'm going to zoom out so that you can see the difference it has I made to this image and I'm going to hit OK and go back into Photoshop for just one more final thing. I'm going to simply come to the selective color option and I'm going to come under the blacks and I'm going to uh, knock up the blacks of this image to around 4 then come to the yellows and also move it to around negative 7 like that. And you can see it has really transformed this image already. You can see the before, after, before, after. We have that beautiful uh, cool tone added onto this image. So basically, this is how I recharge this image. So first of all, I want to show you guys the before and after. Before you can learn about how I do export or how I export my images usually. So you can, if I hold down the alternate key, and click on this background layer you can see the before after before after you can see what i basically did uh, to this image and i think i really did a nice job uh trying to uh, retouch this image if i told you i've learned something new from this and don't forget to like this video before you can even export i'm going to give you like two seconds to do that I hope you're done. So let's export this image the best way so that it doesn't lose color when we post it or put it on another device. I'm going to simply come to file and I'm going to come to export, export as. So here is where the magic is going to happen or take place. So I'm going to simply come to, uh, it is first of all loading the image and it's going to take a very short while to load this image and here we are right now. So basically Come and select uh, the format first of all, JPEG, because I prefer that, because most websites and social media platforms support that format. And come to this resampling, I want the image to be really sharper. I'm going to hit by cubic sharper. Leave these the way they are, and I'm going to embed color profile. So make sure you check these two boxes. And after you have checked those two boxes, you can simply come and hit export and after you you have hit that i'm going to come to my desktop and i'm going to save my image to my own folder so i can simply name this maybe uh instagram because i want to post this on instagram and i'm going to hit save like that and the image is going to be uh, saved in that a very folder I have chosen and it's going to be really sharp and containing all of the colors and yeah this has been a story about how I do or how I recharge my own image and if I told you learned something from this channel don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if I told you watch this video from this channel for the very first time I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more and more tutorials on this channel and don't forget to Keep practicing and keep creating.